right now watching Children's Church, you can go grab a couple of stuffed animals or some dolls or even some little Lego friends and you can do all of these things with them. Today is Sunday, May 9th. That makes it the second Sunday in the month of May. And there's a really special holiday that we celebrate on the second Sunday of May. Do you know what it is? It's Mother's Day. So today is a wonderful day to give your mom or your grandma or someone else in your life that takes care of you a lot of extra love. Now, I know you guys already love your mom and your grandmas, but today is an extra special day to do a few little extra special things. So maybe that's making a card or picking your mom or your grandma some flowers. So whatever you do, do it from your heart and it will be very special. So that's just a little reminder to you that if you haven't said Happy Mother's Day yet to your mom or to your grandma or someone else living with you that takes really great care of you, this is a great day to do that. All right, well, let's talk through our schedule. We just did our ah la 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 leluyas. We're about to go head over to Jimmy for an interview with someone from the church. We'll come back here for our Bible time. We'll have offering and prayer. We'll go to Amanda for a craft. We'll come back here for music time. And then at the very end, we're gonna do something special with the plants. All right, well, I hope you all have fun with Jimmy. See you back here in just a little bit. Bye. Hello children's church how are you today i'm doing pretty good my mom and i went for a long walk the other day with our dog oreo and it was great to see some flowers growing and leaves growing on all the trees and bushes and stuff summer is almost here there were also some puddles for oreo to jump in because it had rained a lot the day before but you know, you know what they say, April showers bring May flowers. Anyway, are you ready for some jokes? Ahem. What did the big flower say to the little flower? It said, hello there, bud. 
get it? Because sometimes you might call a friend of yours buddy, or, or you might just say bud for short. But a bud is also what you call it, you know, call the little thing that grows that then turns into leaves or flowers or stuff. Hmm. Okay, next up, what do you get if you cross a bike and a flower? Well, what you get is bicycle pedals. Get it? Because... You know, because uh, flowers have petals, and that's petals with a T, but bicycles have pedals that you push with your feet, and that's petals with a D, but they, they sound almost the same. Okay, what do you think a frog's favorite flower is? Probably a crocus. Get it? Because sometimes we call the, the noise that frogs make a croak, but a crocus is a kind of flower. So, crocus? <laughs> okay, one more. What kind of flower could you say grows in the middle of your face? Well, you could say that the flower growing on your face, face is tulips. Get it? Because there's a type of flower called a tulip, but if there are multiple and you say tulips, it sounds like two lips, like, like the lips you have with your mouth. <laughs> Isn't that one silly? <sighs> but, but those are pretty good, huh? It's almost as much fun to tell jokes about flowers as it is to look at them while they're growing in the springtime. Now, you're probably expecting that next we're going to have a video call with someone else from the church, right? Well, I thought that I would actually take a bit of a break from our Zoom interviews and we could have a word of the day like we used to. You see, my mom taught me this really great new word while we were out on that walk. Ready? This week, our word of the day is... Providence. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Isn't Providence a, a city in Rhode Island? Well, yes it is. But the, the city is named after the word Providence. So, for the word itself, you might have noticed a clue about what it means. You can actually find the word provide inside the word Providence. You know, you could sort of say it like providence, and it would be spelled the same, except it's actually pronounced providence. I don't know why that is. Kind of funny. Anyway, the, the reason why you can find provide inside the word providence is because the word providence means the way that God takes care of and provides for his whole creation. So whenever God gives us something that we need, that's an example of his providence. It's an example of his providence when he does something amazing to provide for us. Like when Jesus fed 5,000 people with just a couple of fish and a few loaves of bread. But it's also an example of God's providence when we get smaller things which we need, which we might take for granted. Even right now, we have air to breathe, and we have the sun giving us all warmth and light, even though it's behind the clouds sometimes. It, it still works. Uh, and we have people who help take care of us. Since God created those things, and since he's the king over all creation, those things are also examples of his providence for us. There's actually a great Bible verse in the book of James, which explains that. It says, every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father. I think that's a wonderful reminder that God is always taking care of us. Even if we have problems, and whether they're big or they're small, God is watching over us and he'll provide what we need to get through. I hope you liked our word of the day today. I really enjoyed learning it and sharing it with you. Now, 
I think we have our Bible time next, so let's go listen to Miss Christina. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. Hello everyone, welcome back. I guess Jimmy had a surprise for us today, didn't he? He did a word of the day again. It has been so long since Jimmy has done a word of the day. And while I do miss hearing about someone new from the church, I think it's actually pretty cool that he did a word of the day today because it goes perfectly with our story. So Jimmy was telling us about the word providence about how God provides everything that we need, both big and small things. And he cares about us. He cares about all of our problems, big and small problems. And today we're going to learn a story about when Jesus did a miracle because someone had a problem. And so they were asking for Jesus's help. So I'm so glad that Jimmy did that word today. Very exciting. Um, we are going to be using this book today. And our story is about the very first miracle that's written down in the Bible that Jesus did. Jesus went about Galilee preaching. The kingdom of God is near. Come and believe the good news. Along the way, he met people who were to become his followers, including Andrew and his brother Simon, who Jesus called Peter, and John and Nathaniel. One day, as Jesus was traveling through the country, he was invited to a wedding along with his mother and his friends. During the wedding feast, the wine ran out and Mary told Jesus about it. Jesus began to speak, it is not yet my time. But his mother Mary had already turned to the servants and said, do exactly as he tells you to do. So during a lot of wedding parties, grown-ups will sometimes drink wine. It's part of the celebration, kind of like how if you have a birthday, you might eat birthday cake. Now, here's a question though. Let's say that everybody has already had some birthday cake and you ran out. Do you think you would have to go buy more birthday cake? Like, would you need to? Well, not exactly. So this is kind of similar. So everyone's already had some wine at the big party and they've run out. So Jesus has a choice to make here because do the people really need more wine at their wedding? Well, probably not, but it might be nice if there are still some people who want to have some more. So let's see what Jesus does. Nearby stood six large jugs of water. Guests had used the water from them to wash before the meal, according to Jewish law. And now the water jars were all empty. Fill these jars with water, said Jesus to the servants. Then pour out a little bit of the water and take it to the person in charge of the meal. The servants did exactly as they were told and took the water to the person in charge. It had turned into wine. The person in charge called over the groom. Everyone else serves the best wine first and keeps the boring and ordinary wine until last. But you did the opposite. You saved the best wine until now. This was the first of the miracles that Jesus performed. And only the servants who had drawn the water and Jesus's mother Mary knew about the secret. So in our story today, Jesus had a choice. He saw that the people were out of wine at the wedding. And now Jesus could have said, oh, you guys have already had some, you don't really need more. I'm not going to help you. 
but Jesus felt compassion. He felt love for them in his heart and he wanted to help. Now, this problem might have been a small problem, but Jesus still wanted to help them. And, you know, we can do the same thing too. Jesus is the perfect example. And so if we follow Jesus' example and help other people, even if we think it's a small problem or something kind of silly, that's still being a good friend by helping out. So maybe the next time you have a friend that comes to you with a problem and, and they ask for your help, and maybe you're kind of sitting there thinking to yourself, mm, this seems like kind of a small thing or a silly thing. I probably don't really need to help out. Well, Jesus chose to help out in this story and we can choose to help too. We can choose to be good friends even if the problem seems a little silly or a little small to us. Maybe the problem feels really big to your friend, and so it actually is a huge help to them. I think it's so great that Jesus loves us so much and that whether we ask for help with a big problem or with a little problem, that Jesus still loves to help us because he loves us so much. All right, well, that's it for our Bible story for the day. I'm going to put this book away and head on over to get my offering basket, and then we'll get started with our offering time. All right, so I'm all ready to get started with our offering time. What you can do is you can go find a basket of your very own. It doesn't have to look exactly like this. It could be a wicker basket, but it could also be a bowl from your kitchen or a plastic tub or even the lid to a plastic tub. You can get creative with it. So I'm going to put on one of our music videos and when that's all over, we'll start our offering time.
All right, so we're all ready to get started with our offering time. What you can do is you can take your hand and gently place it in the bottom of your basket. Some friends like to touch their heart first and then touch the bottom of the basket. And when you do that, you're telling Jesus, Jesus, I want to give you a gift today. I want to offer something very special to you. I want to give you the gift of my heart, which means that you're telling Jesus that you want to give him the love that is inside of your heart, which is a very special gift that you can give to Jesus. Oh, also, if you have anyone in the room with you, you can take your offering basket and you can pass it back and forth. And as you pass it back and forth, you can take turns putting your hand in the basket while you do that. So we are going to sing the song Sanctuary. And if you know this, you can go on ahead and sing it along with me. So we're going to spend a little bit of time praying now. And remember, when we pray, that's just a fancy way of saying talking to Jesus. And we can do that anytime and anywhere. It doesn't matter where you are, when it is, doesn't matter if you talk out loud or inside of your head, Jesus can hear you and he loves it when you talk to him. All right, so whatever position your body needs to be in right now so that your heart can focus on Jesus and so that you're not being a distraction to anyone around you, that's where you need to be. Maybe it's putting your hands together or closing your eyes, but maybe it's not. So just find whatever position right now is the most comfortable for you and helps you to focus your heart on Jesus. Put your hands in the air. Put your hands in your hair. Get ready for prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you that you give us everything that we need and more. Jesus, thank you that when you were at that wonderful wedding party, that you chose to help out and you chose to turn the water into wine when they ran out of wine. Because we know that you could have said no. You could have said, oh, you guys don't really need more wine. But Jesus, we know that you had compassion and love in your heart and you wanted to help out. And Jesus, you help us in so many ways too. So Jesus, thank you so much for your love and thank you how you take care of us and that you provide for us everything that we need and more. Every good and perfect gift has come from you. Jesus, please help us to help others. When we have a friend who asks for our help, and maybe the friend wants help with something that sounds kind of boring or it's maybe not that important to us. Please help us to choose to help our friend anyways and to use the love inside of our hearts that you have given us 
to love them and to help out, even if it's just something really small and that we think to ourselves, oh, our friend will be fine. They don't need my help. But if they ask for our help, we can be a good friend by helping. Jesus, just like you were a good friend by helping at the wedding. Thank you, Jesus, so much for being the perfect example of how we should live our lives. And please help us to follow you, even when it's hard. Amen. All right, friends. Well, thank you so much for joining me for our offering time and for prayer. We're going to head on over to Amanda for our craft. And I'll see you right back here in just a little bit. Bye. Oh, hi everybody. My name's Amanda and I love doing crafts. So for today's craft, I thought that we could do a craft about Jesus turning water into wine. Isn't it so wonderful how Jesus cares about all of our problems? big ones and small ones. So for this craft, you're going to need the template printed out from the link down below, or you can draw it yourself on plain white paper, some markers or crayons, scissors, and what's called a brag, or a paper clip if you don't have one of those. All right, let's get started. The first thing that you are going to need to do is to color your two pieces of paper. Now, this is a jar. Because remember in the story, Jesus told some people to take six jars and to fill them with water. And then they turned into wine. And so this is one of those jars, and it says water into wine. Because that's what Jesus did. So you're going to need to color the face I mean the jar, and then afterwards you need to color one of these. Now you're not going to need all three, it just happened to fit three on a page. So you just need one of these. And make sure when you color it, you color one side blue to look like water, and then color the other side like maybe a red or a purple color to look like wine. And then this little part in here, you're actually going to be cutting out, so you don't need to color that part. But just make sure you color one side blue here and then the other side either purple or red. All right, so I'm going to color both of these, cut them out, and I'll be right back. Okay, so you can see that I have colored both of the parts and cut them out. And I also cut out the little window down here. So now you need to attach these two pieces together. I'm going to use what's called a brad. It like pushes through the paper and then opens up on the back. And so then you can spin things. But you could also use a paper clip too. You could, you could open up the paper clip and push it through and use that as a brad. So what we need to do now is get the brad all set up. You can see that I had Miss Christina help me punch a little bit of a hole. She just took that and then kind of poked it through the middle there. And then you can also see a tiny little dot right there. That's where I'm going to be pushing the brad through on the top. So I'm going to stick the brad through and then I'll be right back to show you what it looks like. Oh, perfect. So you can see that I put the brad in and then I opened it up on the back side so it's all nice and secure. And now I can spin that piece on the bottom there. So I can put it on the blue part for water or I can turn it onto the purpley red part for wine. Oh, I love it. And I bet if you make one, it'll look great too. Hey, speaking of which, if you wanna have a grown up Send a picture of your craft to Miss Christina, and then she can share it with me, and I would love to see it. All right, well, I hope you all had a great time in craft today. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you had a great time with Amanda working on that craft. And now we're going to watch a few music videos. But when we're done with the music videos, we're not going to come back here. 
we are gonna go over to my house to work on the plants. Now, if you remember from last week, I was showing you about the update on the plants and how they had grown so much and how, remember how they have the two baby leaves, but then they start to grow the special leaves in the middle. The special leaves have gotten even bigger on these plants and it's so exciting, but they're running out of space. So we need to replant them because right now they're just in little bags that are like this big, they're really tiny. So we have to replant them in a little bit bigger pots so that their roots have more room to grow. So after we are all done with the music videos, we will head on over to my house to work on the plants. I'll see you there in just a little bit. Bye.
Welcome to my backyard. So today we're going to be replanting a few of our plants. And let me just remind you about why we're doing that. So you can see this is on one of the melon plants. You can see that there are some roots that are starting to stick out. Actually, there's quite a few roots that are starting to stick out here. So we just want to give these plants a little bit of a bigger pot so that they can keep growing nice and big. And let me just bring you closer so you can see all of the wonderful plants that we've got here. So as a reminder, I have some onions over here. There are a few of these honeydew melon plants that have sprouted up. There are a few watermelon plants that have sprouted. We have our tomato plants here. 
These are all our tomatoes. We have our sweet peppers here, and then we have some marigold flowers here. So today we're just gonna focus on replanting some of our bigger ones, the melons. So the honeydew melons and the watermelons. And then I'm probably going to plant a few extra watermelon seeds just right in the garden this week or sometime next week um, because only a few of the watermelon plants sprouted and they don't look as good as like the nice big honeydew melon ones. So I might just plant a couple of extra seeds and see if that helps. So I have some of the bigger pots here. I have plenty of soil in my soil bags. So I'm going to get started. planted three of the honeydew melon and two of the watermelon. I'm pretty messy. I should probably go clean up, shouldn't I? <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you all had a great time in Children's Church today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope you have a great week. I can't wait until next time when we're going to replant some of these others. All right. I'll see you next week. Bye.